With rubble everywhere and the sound of gunfire still piercing the air, it's hard to believe that anyone could call Kobani home. But it's estimated that more than 2,000 people live here, including many children. Before the fighting between ethnic Kurds and IS group militants began in September, Kobani was home to 50,000 residents. This woman, who only gave her first name, is from a nearby village. A mortar fell and hit us as I carried two of my daughters. They were injured in my arms. One was seven and she was sent to Turkey and she died there. The militants may have shelled Kobani, but they haven't been able to cut off the city's food supply. This bakery is run by a Kurdish Syrian group called the People's Protection Units, better known as YPG. It supplies bread to Kobani's civilians and defenders. This bakery shut down 20 years ago, and we came and fixed it up for use in these difficult times. We've been helping people and sending bread to them daily. Members of YPG also deliver bread to approximately 1,000 refugees just outside Kobani, a few feet from Turkish troops and military vehicles, and the barbed wire fence that separates Syria from Turkey. The area is within reach of IS mortar fire and has been attacked repeatedly, according to the journalist who recorded this video. A lot of people who lived in the buffer zone have come back into the city to live there because it's more safer from being shelled or being bombed or mortared. The refugees have dug foxholes to keep their children safe from the militant shelling. Don't these little kids deserve mercy, this young boy says? He has no shoes, few clothes, and no belongings. Ned Barker, The Associated Press.